I'm about to make some changes to my control system to change from the Kakute F7, which is pretty good controller. I've been happy with it, but it only has one megabyte of flash, and I want to move to a two megabyte flash so I can run the uh, RG Rover with all features, mainly the R uh, GPS for y'all, without having to do my own modifications of the code or whatever to eliminate some other things. So, I want to stay off the shelf as much as possible with the code. Um, but before I do, I thought I'd give an overview of, of the way I have my controls done in this box, which is really my second uh, iteration, I guess. Uh, I'm trying to remember if I had a had a had a, a, a another one in there. The first one was uh, very much a, a prototype in a Tupperware container, um, which I chose too small one. It was too small even in that, and had to have some some items external to it but anyway uh, so this this one was a little bit better uh done in fact i hate to have to take parts of it out <laughs> but uh so just quickly on the outside uh, i have two switches one of these is the power switch for the everything the second one is power to the servos that run the um drive you know that do uh, control the sticks on the zero turn more uh on this end I have a fan uh, which is blowing out and they, a power switch for that fan. Again, all this is um, slave off of the main power switch, I think. I really can't remember. I may have that fan on, uh, set, uh, connected to 12 volts by itself, uh, but I don't think so. I think it's on the, on the after the other switch. This is just the inlet side for the ventilation um, uh, found all these this little grill uh, on Amazon, I believe. Drilled some holes. Rather than cutting a whole, uh, you know, side out of this thing, I just drilled holes. You can see these these are holes on the in the actual enclosure, and then this is screwed to the outside. Um, it doesn't filter everything, but I don't want to stop all the airflow either. But it does catch most of the trash that would be thrown up by the lawnmower. Uh, but things inside do get a little dusty. On the back side, I have uh, antenna connectors down here. One of those is for the GPS. Right now is a single GPS inside. Uh, well, yeah, single one that I'm using. And there's the LoRa uh, RTCM3 communication, the corrections from the base rover. And then I went ahead and drilled some additional holes here. I need to plug them right now. They're just temporarily covered, but I do. I plan to use an extra one or so right away. But these connectors, this is the power connector coming in, so that's 12 volts, 13.8, uh, whatever, from the Moore uh, power system. Um, this one is a six-pin connector. It is the connection for the servos, three pins to each servo for the drive. And then my uh, safety interlock, this is wired into the seat uh, safety circuit that will cut off the Moore uh, under the you know, a couple of conditions I have that will that shut it down, basically my emergency stop feature uh, and loss of communication. So internally, the way it looks is like this. And uh, let's see, we can look right here and see, yeah, this, this uh, the fan, power to the fan, to the switch for the fan does come from this main power uh, strip, which is fed from the main power switch so it is all everything is a slave off of this one switch so this switch powers everything i don't have any power connector of course right now but but what you see inside let's see let me just try to start from the uh, well just to name the components first of all i guess um i built this homemade carrier board for the kakute f7 that's the kakute f7 and uh then this is a homemade double-sided circuit board um, I don't like the small DF13 connectors. Uh, the newer style are better, uh, but way better. I like them fine. I'm trying to think of that part number. I'm sure you all know what I'm trying to say. GH maybe. Anyway, they're good. <laughs> but uh, they're all still tiny. And when I have plenty of room, you know, I can understand you needing those tiny connectors on a on a, a copter or something that's going to fly. But uh, so the way I made this board, all the the uh, ports and that need that are on the Kakute F7 are brought out to both a, a tenth hitch header and to the standard to the DF13 
13 connector. So I have the option of plugging in a cable like this from a standard, you know, GPS or whatever, or uh, a connector that's, you know, I've made myself that's easier to, much easier to work with uh, as far as making cables and all. So um, that's what that board is. I won't go into any more detail, but. Um, this is my GPS. I have several different GPSs that are based on the F9P and a couple based on the M8P prior to that. But uh, this one is a U-Blocks C099 F9P evaluation board. Um, it has a connector for Wi-Fi. It can receive corrections from a similar board through Wi-Fi and so forth, but that's not. I'm not using that feature. I don't really need the, some of the capabilities on that board, but I have them and they're working, they work fine. So that's what I put on here. On top of it um, is a screw terminal Arduino prototype board. And then on top of that is a, a 3D printed carrier that I have the uh, Adafruit Feather M0 LoRa module that's receiving, it's connected, you see the antenna cable to here for an external antenna that receives the corrections from an identical board that's on a base. Um, so all this is just the way I chose to mount it to, to kind of cut down on some soldering and all and still I think gave me pretty good connections. I have this loose right now from experimenting with things. Um, let's see. Um, there is no compass in the or magnetometer in the F7. Uh, I think I'm right about that. Anyway, I ended up putting this underneath here. This is a 3D printed cover just to hold it down. There's a cheap GPS module there that uh, does give me a second GPS reading, uh, but mainly it gives me a compass as well. Uh, so the I2C and the uh, GPS are connected to these two terminals. Um, the I'm using a uh, SkyDroid T12, I think it is. That may be the wrong model number. It's their a GP, I mean, a, uh, a uh, handheld remote control and receiver. That's the receiver for it. Um, I could probably talk about that. It's, it's had good, really good range. I've had some trouble with uh, communication. It actually does serve two purposes, by the way. It gives you, me the uh, radio control um signals you know from the handheld remote but also that handheld remote connects to a pc through bluetooth and then the telemetry so it comes through it so there's not a separate telemetry radio if you look you'll see there are connections uh here going to the flight controller uh to the s bus connector but then i guess i, I removed it unfortunately but then it's normally on the side there's a connect a connector that goes from there to the um, telemetry port uh, right here, telem one. So that that cable I took off. I've already begun trying to figure out how I'm going to modify this thing. So normally there's a cable from there to the side. That's the the standard telemetry for Mission Planner on the PC. Um, and that's why I've had a little trouble. This this thing gives a little bit of trouble sometimes when you're trying to download a large mission. It will fail. So that's been aggravating. But otherwise, it's worked okay. Um, let's see, what else do we have? In uh, the bottom right corner, I have a power supply. I keep forgetting if it's 7.4. Let's see, I've got a high-tech D845WP right here on my, uh, right here. So 7.4 volts. Okay, so the maximum voltage you can use with the servos that I'm controlling my sticks on the zero turn more uh the maximum voltage you can use is 7.4 so that's a 7.4 volt power supply it's actually adjustable but i've got it set to 7.4 volts um so it on my circuit board uh i bring in the 7.4 volts to right here and then i'm routing that on the board to the power connectors power pins for these connections that go out and go to the servos uh, so that's how I get 7 point volts kind of neatly tied into the wires that go down to the servo to the servos. Um, next, I have a couple of relays. One of them I'm not using yet. I plan to use that for some auxiliary equipment 
uh, with the mower or either the PTO on the mower. had a lot of different thoughts on that, but what I really need right now, I'm planning to try to pull a sprayer with the mower, and I need to turn on and off the pump. So I'm planning to take this small relay and have it control a larger relay that provides uh, the power to the pump on the on the sprayer, but that's unused at the moment. This one, however, is my kill uh, switch or kill signal for the uh, mower. It, it's, uh, again, the contacts on this relay are, are uh, connected in series with the circuit for the seat switch. In fact, the seat switch is taken out right now because I don't sit you know, on, the, on the seat normally and replaced with the contacts for that relay. Um, so, it, so it, it is controlled from an Arduino compatible board that's underneath there. And once again, I have that same screw shield that I have on here on top of there uh, just to let me use terminal blocks to wire things in and out rather than having to solder or, or, or certainly not just have pins stuck down in the top of the Arduino connector, which I have certainly done in experimenting. Um, so I think that's it. The, the way the wiring works, I have these terminal blocks, uh, Euro style terminal blocks for ground and 12 volts. And uh, the, the power wiring, the ground goes straight from here to this ground uh, terminal block. The power wire runs underneath the board to this switch and then um, runs... It, well, it runs under there. It is coming in on the bottom uh, terminal of that switch. So, if the switch is on, then power comes. Uh, the five twelve volts is applied through the switch to this terminal, which goes to this switch, which is the one that's connected to the power for the this power supply. But also, just you know, coming off that same terminal, power goes from there. You may can see the wire to the power strip. So basically power goes through here to the power strip and everything that needs 12 volts is powered from the power strip. Um, so that's that's a look at it now. What I will be doing is removing this Kakute carrier board and, and all and replacing it with the uh, cube orange and um, got to uh, I've got a plan for how to do most of the wiring. Uh, fortunately, a lot of it, you know, the, the uh, GPS, uh, I'm going to use a second GPS I'm going to put in here that will be, uh, uh, I'm going to use an RG Simple, Simple RTK2B, and so it'll plug straight into one of the ports here. Um, this one, I'm going to have to rewire, you know, wire, if I keep it as my other GPS, and I might as well, I think, I will uh, wire it in uh, with a connector I've already uh, made made up some of these connectors. I have them up here, but so that I can wire that straight into a GPS connector or on the uh, cube. Um, let's see, power is pretty straightforward. Anyway, I'll show you those things as I get them done. But it's a uh, you know a little unfortunate to undo what I thought was fairly nice. <laughs> Took me a lot of work to get it done. It's not the greatest in the world, but um, uh, it's been working okay. But I do want to go to something with the with the higher uh, memory and more horsepower too as far as processing speed, although I don't know that I need that. I, I re really don't know. Uh, would like to experiment just for the academic uh, benefit of knowing, you know, how how the slower processors work. I've, I've got a a, uh, a Pixhawk, an older Pixhawk. I guess it, some, I think it's called a Pixhawk 1 by some people. It's 2.4.8 is another designation. But um, it has two megabytes of flash, but of course it's an older, slower processor. Um, I'm really tempted to try to put it in, but then that's a bunch of wiring that doesn't apply because the connectors are different to this. So I don't know if I have time. I just want to get things working. So I may just jump on the bandwagon with this high-powered processor. I bought it. Might as well, I guess. But I am curious, if, as far as a rover goes, if the old Pixhawk would do the trick. It's not quite as risky as something flying in the sky, you know, if it doesn't work, as long as I can kill it. Um, and uh, that's one reason the kill circuitry is totally independent of the processor. Uh, if it goes crazy, which it has, I have had it happen, uh, then I can still kill it. But anyway, uh, I'm planning instead to jump on the bandwagon with the, with the nice uh, 
high speed processor so there's a little bit of what's coming up and uh, talk to you later